Hello everybody, Doc Scanlon here. I wanted to make a little movie to those who might be interested um, about our new quest, building flat top guitars. We've already are well on our way with an arch top guitar that we've got the top and back carved, the sides bent, the back glued to the sides, the neck's almost done. So uh, I'll show you a little movie about that as well. But um, flat top guitars is another one of my passions and my first passion when I started building guitars in 1964. I didn't build that many of them. I got into the world of repairing and then into the world of entertaining. And now I'm over with that and now I want to build guitars again. Arch tops and flat tops as we call them in the trade. The flat top guitar is the oldest style and it was developed, uh, well, who knows where it actually came from originally. It, it evolved into its pretty much current form uh, in Europe and also in Spain. I guess Europe, Spain. It, but Spain, the particular uh, type of guitar that we kicked, got out of Spain that's still pretty much unchanged is the classical guitar, which has been divided into two sections more recently into the uh, classical guitar and the uh, flamenco guitar, which is essentially the same guitar pretty much. Um, it's always strung with nylon strings, formerly with gut strings from sheep intestines, and now nylon strings. So the, the tension on the guitar is less than most of the guitars that we're familiar with today, which are strung with steel strings, unless you play a classical guitar, and usually it's a whole different culture, a whole different repertoire of music, all there is, there is some crossover and overlap. Uh, I'm most interested in the steel string guitar, what we call steel string guitar, all those strings are mostly m uh, m made out of other metals other than steel. Uh, that that uh, steel strings came in, I believe, into the guitar world in the early 1900s. Martin didn't start putting steel strings on guitars, I think, until the tw late 20s maybe. And Gibson did earlier than that, but Gibson really didn't build flat gu top guitars, I don't believe, until then. In, late 20s or 30s, I'm not sure. They started, actually they developed, Orville Gibson pretty much invented the arch top guitar, taking that principle from the violin factory, uh, violin factory, the violin uh, design, not the violin factory, the violin design, which goes back hundreds of years. So you have two essential types of guitars, acoustical guitars these days, not talking about electric guitars. You have the arch top carved out carved from a solid block of wood, lots of labor involved, similar to a violin, cello. And then you have the flat top guitars where the top and the back are essentially flat or bent ever so slightly, but they're not carved. So I have some wood here. I love pretty wood. I think that a guitar should be beautiful. Uh, doesn't have to be, but who wants to play an ugly guitar? I think a guitar should be beautiful. If you go on the internet and you look up uh, groups of uh, players, groups of makers, groups of uh, collectors that like acoustical guitars, they will always show you pictures. Why are they showing you pictures of guitars if it's all about sound and tone and music? I think that answers the question. So uh, looks is very important, playability is very important, and of course it can't sound like it's full of water. It's got to have a certain amount of tone. But you take all the guitars that are built roughly to certain specifications, they're all going to sound good. They're all going to sound different. And they're all going to sound the same. None of them's going to sound like a saxophone. But none of them's going to sound exactly like the other one. And they're all going to sound good because it depends on who's playing them. Harry's going to play this one and he says, ah, it's the best. John's going to play a different one and says, oh, no, that's the best. Well, how can they both be the best? Because this is not scientific. This is a matter of subjective opinion. Your ears are different than my ears. Your brain's different than my, my brain. I don't like all those high frequencies. I don't like those low frequencies. Whatever. I just like it. I like the sound of that. There's something about it. I can't put my finger on it. So all guitars come out differently, but in the big picture, they all come out the same. So. You have the tone issue, but let's go with the looks issue for a while and the construction issue. This is probably considered in the guitar world the most beautiful and desirable wood 
for a guitar body for the back and sides. It's called Brazilian Rosewood. You can't buy it anymore. If you buy it for a guitar, sets for a guitar, it's over a thousand dollars a set and it has to be imported before the 1960s and that's why it's so expensive uh, because there's so much so little of it left uh, the the people that depleted all the brazilian rosewood in brazil believe it or not were the perfume makers in paris they shipped those big beautiful logs over there and ground it up into pulp and made perfume out of it so blame them so anyway how did i get this wood then how'd you get this wood doc well this wood was used by, uh, was bought before the 60s, legally brought into the country by a furniture company in uh, North Carolina. And then when they went out of business, they sold it to a veneer. And this is what this is, veneer. And I'll explain a little bit about that. A veneer uh, warehouse where I found out about it and I bought a bunch of it. I have a lot of it. It's absolutely gorgeous. I, I would like to have a lot more of it because you can't get it anymore. Now, you'll notice it's very thin. It's like paper thin. It's 20,000ths of an inch thick. And you would say, well, Doc, you can't build a back out of that. It's too doggone thin. Well, yeah, you're right. But let's back up a little bit. How did they build guitars in days of yore? They built them two ways. They got a solid piece of this, about an eighth of an inch thick, very expensive, and that's what they used. Or they got a piece of wood about an eighth of an inch thick maybe a little thinner and then they took this veneer 20 thousandths of an inch piece and glued it onto it now they have the best of both worlds they have a much more inexpensive piece of wood here and they can get a lot more of these pieces out of a plank of brazilian rosewood so you're not cutting down all the trees as much you're conserving the forest and it's less expensive and there's no downside to it. It actually is less prone to cracking because now you've got this backing wood. This is fairly brittle wood, fairly prone to crack. So you solved the problem there too. But, uh, and Martin guitars, the Martin, famous Martin guitars, those of you who know about uh, Mr. Martin who came over from uh, Germany or that part of the world, I don't know if it was called Germany at that time, in the 1800s, when he built his rose guitars, he made used rosewood because that in furniture making and guitar making was considered the prime wood. Um, but he used veneer. The backs were made out of spruce, about an eighth of an inch, maybe a little less. And he glued this on top of it. So nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with what he, the idea he had. McAfee in uh, France, the Selmer Company built the McAfee guitars for that Django Reinhardt played. That's a different culture. It's a different, the, the, if you looked at those guitars, you'd see some similarities and some differences. But the backs and sides are 100% plywood. Whew. I said that word, didn't I? Plywood. Plywood guitars aren't supposed to be as good, are they? Well, Martin didn't call them plywood and Selmer didn't call them plywood. Uh, but they're plywood. So we won't use that word, but that's what it is. But they aren't the plywood that you buy to, to nail to the outside of your house. It's 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 uh, good wood, and it's done correctly. So, I'll, I can go into that a little later. So this wood, you can either use solid Brazilian rosewood, if you've got $1,000, and I bet you can't even find a piece like that that's that pretty in solid Brazilian rosewood today. I bet you can't find it at any price. And if you can, it's gonna be a thousand dollars at least. So we're not interested in that, but we are interested in the, the guitar sounding good. We are interested in it being stable and not cracking and not, uh, you know, we, that's important. So let's go into that. Does a plywood guitar, a laminated, oh, I used that word again. Mm. Does a laminated body guitar sound any worse than a solid wood guitar? No. No. All guitars sound the same. All guitars sound different. Uh, no guitars sound like saxophones. They all sound different. Depends on a million different things when you build them. 
What wood you use for the bridge? How high is the saddle? What's the saddle material? How thick is the top? How is it tapered, if it tapers at all? How are the braids, braces? Where are the braces placed? What kind of spruce? What kind of spruce top? Maybe you use cedar top. What are the block, the, in, the blocks, end blocks, and the next blocks made out of? How big are they? What's the lining? How, what's that made of? How are you arching your back? There are so many variables, all of them affecting the tone. So which one is the big variable that affects the tone as far as whether this back and side is plywood, laminated wood, or solid? How much does that contribute to the sound? Well, from my experience and my experiments, almost nothing, nothing. So if it changes the sound a tiny bit, how are we to say it doesn't make it sound better? Who's to say it doesn't sound better? Because Johnny's going to play a guitar that Mary doesn't like as much. And Mary's going to play a guitar that Johnny doesn't like as much. So which one's better? Do you want to do blindfold test on Stradivari guitars? Everybody goes to the Stradivari guitar. I'm so sorry, the Stradivari violin. Although Stradivari did make guitars. When Stradivari violins got to be millions and millions of dollars, even before that, Number one violin to have is the Stradivari. But when they did the blindfold test, the Stradivari didn't get picked as the best one any more than some of the newer violins. It's, a, it's tradition, it's myth, it's not scientific. So, anyway, I have this wood. I love this wood, it's beautiful wood. And uh, I'll show you what it looks like here up close. And that's very nice. So we're going to make a guitar out of this wood. Let me show you some more wood. This is a this is a back that we've already glued the other pieces together. So it is a guitar builders like to do that for some reason. I have no idea why. So this is going to go on a smaller size guitar than this. But this is a, this particular wood is Hawaiian koa wood. And it's, it's figured, which means that as you move it, the little figures in there dance around. It's almost like three-dimensional, if you can see that. See that, how that works? That's pretty wood, I love that. Now this wood is almost like the Brazilian rosewood. Very rare, very hard to get a hold of. They've cut so much of it down. But I have a big stash of this in veneer form. So I'm not worried. Here's another one. Here's the sides that we've already taken out of the mold that we've formed into the shape. And take a look at this wood. This is from Australia, Australian figured walnut. And look at this. Do a dance for you. Oh, makes your mouth water. Isn't that something? How'd you have to have a guitar made out of that? very thin. One advantage of doing it this way, if you take a Martin guitar, famous Martin guitar, this is pattern after the famous Martin guitar dreadnought size, which they put on the market in the early 30s. Right in here is a delicate area because it's flat and it's wide. If you take a Martin guitar and push your finger in here, you can push into that side and it'll scare you how far you can push in. There's many, many stories of guys that own those guitars, and there's a crack in here. It's just a weak spot. This is thinner, thinner than a Martin guitar side, and that is not going to crack. I can't bend that at all. That's not going to crack ever. Now, this pancake batter looking stuff out here is the epoxy that comes out from the one you squish this all together. This is this gets trimmed off. Epoxy is a wonderful glue. It's very stiff. It's like glass. It's very crystallized. And uh, it doesn't creep. And that's important in guitar construction. Scotch glue is the same way. Scotch glue or a hot hide glue which used, was used by the Egyptians uh, thousands of years ago. Same as veneer used by the Egyptians thousands of years ago. A uh, hot hide glue, wonderful glue, Martin used to use it up until the 60s, but then they got this yellow carpenter's glue, which I don't like at all, 
because it creeps. It doesn't dry crystal like this and like scotch glue. It dries gooey. Not super gooey like bubble gum. But I remember one time I was repairing instruments in Fredericksburg and, and Ben Eldridge, the banjo player for the solemn scene, came in with a big frown on his face. He had just bought this brand new Martin guitar and inadvertently left it in the trunk of his guitar in the case, in the trunk of his car in the, in the case. And the sun beat down on it and he heated it up. And when he opened the case, the bridge had come unglued and moved a quarter of an inch towards the neck and dug into the finish and he was just sick. Martin used to glue those bridges on with scotch glue. That would have never happened. Never happened. Epoxy glue never would have happened. Nice thing about scotch glue is if something does come unglued you can just put more scotch glue on it and it sticks to itself. That yellow glue you've got to grind down to bare wood Got to grind wood away, sawdust, there it goes, the wood's gone. And now you have to put more yellow glue in there. I guess you, no, I would not use hot high glue, but they they would uh, usually glue them with yellow glue again if it went back to the Martin factory is what they would do. So his poor guitar, that finish, you can never get that to look perfect unless you refinish the whole top. It's just because they use the wrong glue. It's so unfortunate. They still use that glue today. Most builders use that kind of glue. So yeah, if you don't let your guitar sit in the case, of course, it's not gonna happen. But um, I'm not convinced that it's not gonna happen on the necks. I'm not, gonna, I'm not convinced that that doesn't shift a little bit and contribute to neck instability. But let's not get into that too much. I just don't like glue that moves around. I like glue when it's done, it's done. So we're going to build some of these guitars and uh, show you some of the processes as we go. Hope you enjoy it. Hope it's not too boring to you. You know, one man's meets another man's poison. But uh, I like, I want them to be beautiful. I want them to be when you open the case. You and your friends go, ah, it's very important. I want them to be when you strum them and when you play whatever style you play. I want you to say, ah, when you play, it's in tune, it plays easily. This has to be an ah moment. So that's the parts of the guitar that are important. So we have lots of ideas. We have some innovations and I'll go over those. I haven't gone over hardly any of them, but don't be afraid of plywood guitars. Mr. Smallman in Australia builds a guitar, classical guitar, which is supposed to be lightweight. It's about as heavy as a Gibson banjo with a big tone ring and a big thick rim and a big resonator on it. Oh my goodness. And John Williams doesn't have any problem. The famous John Williams classical guitar player goes crazy over him. He sells them. Mr. Smallman sells them. I saw one that sold the other day, 27,000 pounds. I guess that's a lot of dollars, isn't it? Well, I think if you had, I think around $25,000 or so, you can buy one. I think that's amazing. And they're made out of plywood. Not only are they made out of plywood, the back is about a quarter of an inch thick because he doesn't want the back to vibrate at all. He wants it to reflect all the sound back to the top. He's smart. Now, the the inside of his guitar also has a big real plywood, like what you do tack to the outside of your house, big shell around it because he makes his top so thin so that they will vibrate. They're kind of banjo-y sounding. Some people don't like it. Some of them think it's too loud and brittle. I think they sound wonderful. A lot of people think they sound wonderful and you can have one if you got 20 some thousand dollars. So quite a revolutionary design of his. I, I think some of his principles are correct. Bolts on his necks. Perfect. We can go into that later on. Anyway, uh, some ideas what we're going to do and we want to make these instruments affordable. We want to make them out, out of this world, museum pieces. And that's what we do. That's, that's our passion. So stay with us if you'd like to uh, keep abreast of Doc. Doc's crazy idea about 
building guitars for fun and pro well for fun and not much profit involved in this all right have a lovely day god bless and ta-ta